In this session, where we are going to familiarize ourselves with the syllabus of geology optional for the civil service examination and also for IFS main, we are going to understand number one, the topics and subtopics which are there in the syllabus. Second, what we are going to understand, what kind of questions are asked from individual subtopics. There are 90% of topics in our syllabus which give you a straightforward question. That means for 90% of the questions, you can directly trace its origin within the syllabus. They are, they are, these are single question topics, means these topics are worth a single question. And this is a tradition, this is a pattern that UPSC has followed for last more than 20 years. I do not have any doubt that this pattern is going to continue. So, on the surface of it, geology looks like that it has a large syllabus, but the fact is that it is basically for 90% of the syllabus, it is a list of potential questions that the UPSC expects you to prepare. That makes our job very, very simple that, okay, this is the topic. Let's get its basic concepts straight. Let's get a hang of the core facts and examples and let's prepare a great answer. That is where I and my teaching colleagues in this team, which you are already familiar with through yesterday's interaction, are going to help you. And that is how we adopt a very concise approach to geology optional. But while maintaining this conciseness, we ensure that within this concise format, we give you the quality of answer which your competitors will have to spend a lot of effort upon. Your competitor will have to go through many books if you talk about the entire syllabus. So, to match your standards of answer, your competitor may have to read 20 plus books. If you are relying on us, it is my duty and our team's duty to give you that quality of answer which your competitor will find extremely hard. I am not saying impossible. Impossible is nothing. But at least your competitor will be finding it extremely hard to match. <clears throat> and with that kind of competitive edge, with that kind of cons conciseness, which will allow you to revise the entire syllabus, entire set of Q&A so many times before you go to the main examination, that holds the key to 300 plus score in your subject. But of course, the revision is something that you have to do. In yesterday's session, we have already discussed that minimum three cycles of revision are absolutely essential for geology optional. Two cycles of conventional revision, I am going to teach you in one of my forthcoming session, the technique of active revision and one revision definitely through the test answering pattern. Means you will go through a test series and you are going to write in number of questions at least through 10 tests so that you are ekdam se examination ready, you are battle ready. So that will be the game plan. If you can add one more layer of normal revision, that will be even sharpening your memory, even sharpening your command over the facts and the concept. Second thing that throughout the duration of this course, please, please, please write 10 answers a week. After every week's three classes, I am going to give you a list of questions and what you have to do is to revise whatever you have done within a week, sit down and write all those answers. We will be checking you, uh, checking your answers and we will be giving you the feedback. Okay. So, this much basic we are already aware of. Now, let us start with the examination of the syllabus. How does our syllabus look like? Okay. So, first and foremost, I am and I am assuming that all of you sitting here are knowing a little bit but not much. And since I am not assuming much from you, so what I am going to do is to start it from the standpoint of a beginner. Ki aap beginner ho and I have to tell you every single thing that needs to be known. So that requires me to first tell you that there are going to be two papers. That is paper 1 and paper 2. Don't start thinking that this much I already know what's new about it. Don't worry, we are going to come to such dimensions also which you do not know and that will be worth its while. But for now, 
So there are two papers. If we look at it, so paper one is largely conventional zoology. Largely, okay. But there are certain topics which actually do not fit within the conventional zoology. And let us call this part as modern parts of zoology. Depending on your background, you may find one of these two papers a little easier or a little more interesting. But if you come from a background where you did not get an opportunity to study zoology as such as a subject, let's say that you are coming from biotechnology background or you are coming from life sciences background where you have studied certain segments but not all the segments, whole lot of doctors, whole lot of veterinarians, whole lot of dental surgeons, whole lot of uh, I would say nursing graduates, pharmacy graduates, even they take geology as an optional and not only they take geology as an optional, they are known to do perf perform very very well in the examination. So they do well during the preparation, they perform very well in the examination and they definitely get good uh, result from the UPSC. Okay? Now, <clears throat> what are included within the paper 1 of our subject? Okay? So, let's uh, take a look. What are all included in paper 1? So, paper 1, when you look at the question paper, okay? So, both the papers are divided into two segments. That is segment A, that is called part A and part B. Part A is going to basically deal with animal diversity. This is where you are going to cover the different groups of animals and not only the different groups of animals but also their comparative anatomy, especially comparative anatomy of the chordates. Okay, more specifically, it is comparative anatomy of the chordates. So, in animal diversity, you are going to study the phyla of the invertebrates and the classes of the chordata plus along with the classes of chordata you are also going to do comparative anatomy that is part a or section a okay so in the question paper it will be printed as section a and section b okay part b consists of ecology certain parts of ecology are based on current data current facts and figures but most of the ecology syllabus is also pretty much conventional where you have to study the biogeochemical cycles, community ecology, ecosystem ecology, population ecology, the different biomes of the world. These are the topics which are very much conventional. But there are certain applied topics which will be overlapping with your general studies, environmental ecology. And in those parts, the current input, the recent information that you gather as a part of your general studies preparation that will add great value to your ecology answers. Let us say if there is a question on air pollution, if there is a question on acid rain, if there is a question on ozone layer depletion, if there is a question on climate change, its impact, its mitigation, if there is a question on wildlife and its protection in our country, if there is a question on general environmental pollution or for that matter air pollution in general, water pollution, river pollution pe question I hai. In such questions, you can add uh, base, you can add from your base of current information that you have gathered, that you have built for your general studies preparation and that way you can write the applied ecology questions much better than most of your conventional approach uh, friends, conventional approach uh, competitors in the examination. 
द सेकेंड पार्ट इज इकोनॉमिक जुलॉजी देर आर पार्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक जुलॉजी एंड वी आर गोइंग टू सी द सिलेबस बट देर आर पार्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक जुलॉजी विच आर बेसिकली क्वाइट कन्वेंशनल लाइक सेरिकल्चर कार्प कल्चर एपिकल्चर और फॉर दैट मैटर अ नंबर ऑफ कम्युनिकेबल डिजीजेस दे आर ऑल्सो आई वुड से एक्सेप्ट फॉर इट्स इंसिडेंस इन इंडिया और एक्सेप्ट फॉर द डिजीज बर्डन इन इंडिया हार्डली देर इज एनी थिंग विच आई कैन कॉल द मॉडर्न और करेंट पेस्ट सो दैट टॉपिक इज ऑल्सो वेरी मच द ट्रेडिशनल और ट्रेडिशनल टॉपिक द थर्ड सेट ऑफ टॉपिक वुड बी द डिजीज ऑफ क्रॉप्स एंड स्पेशली द इंसेक्ट पेस्ट ऑफ क्रॉप एंड स्टोर्ड ग्रेन्स देर यू हैव गॉट वेरी क्लियर कट मैंशन ऑफ द इंसेक्ट पेस्ट यू जस्ट हैव टू स्टडी अबाउट दोज इंसेक्ट पेस्ट सिमिलरली देर आर वैक्टर्स फॉर एनिमल डिजीजेज कैटल डिजीज एंड लाइफ स्टॉक डिजीजेज दैट इज ऑल्सो वेरी क्लियरली लेड आउट बट आफ्टर दिस देर आर टू थ्री टॉपिक्स विच आर फेयरली मॉडर्न टॉपिक्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल here you have got forensic uh, applications of geology that is a new topic then there is a topic called genetic counseling that is again a new topic plus the medical applications of biotechnology that is again pretty much a modern uh, topic so these are a couple of topics which are modern but rest of the topics are pretty conventional the third topic is ethology and ethology basically means animal behavior so this is a topic which is very interesting and at the same time easy to prepare and the best part is it is very important in section b invariably you will find two short notes from ethology then there are two small areas one is bio statistics and last area is bio instrumentation and i hope you all are writing these outlines bio instrumentation so that is the composition of paper 1 if you see in paper 1 there are now eight areas invertebrate zoology their phyla chordate zoology their classes plus comparative anatomy three parts in section a and then you have got five parts in section b so in paper b you have got several segments several topics and within these topics there are going to be several uh, sub topics which you have to prepare but the best part is that apart from ecology everything else in paper 1 almost everything else i can fairly say that 98% of the topics apart from ecology are the topics from where a single question is possible that is the only saving grace in paper 1 because the number of topics if you look at the they will appear quite a good number of topics so those who do not realize what kind of questions are going to be asked they will feel initially intimidated uh, about the number of topics but once you realize that these topics are going to give you only a single type of question you start treating these topics as essentially a list of questions that simplifies your job quite a lot you then start realizing if i am doing a topic for what question am i doing the topic you prepare yourself according to the question that reduces the burden that you have to burden of what you have to cover that also streamlines your later cycles of revision this is the most practical approach to go about paper 1 of geology it is true that the same does not does not apply especially to the applied aspects of ecology in applied aspects of ecology there are going to be questions from inside the topic for example if you talk about global warming some year it will be upon cause of global warming some year it could be upon the impact of global warming some year the question can be on mitigation measures about global warming once a short note was asked directly on kyoto protocol now you can see how climatic change gives you four different types of question and if i assess it correctly then actually not four 
there are six, seven different types of short notes which could be asked. Because these are such general questions that perhaps anyone can attempt an answer. And that is where you have to write an answer that differentiates your standing with respect to your competitors. It should show very clearly to the examiner where you stand, where your competitors stand. If you can do that, nothing can stop you. Now, let us see what are included in paper 2. So, in paper 2, you have got less number of segments. Most of the students coming from applied biology background, they invariably find paper 2 much simpler. Because if you come from biotechnology background, biochemistry background, microbiology background, life sciences background, no matter what background you are coming from, the subject areas in paper 2, you are going to find significantly easier. But that does not mean that paper 1 is hard. There is a strategic way to look at paper 1. And when you do paper 1 here, you will start taking much deeper interest in paper 1. It is such an easy area where with help of right diagram, minimal number of examples and just short clear cut explanation, you can score much better than your competitors. Having said that, paper 1 is also divided into section A and section B. Paper 1 is also divided into section A and section B. Section A first area is cell biology. Second area is genetics. And third area is evolutionary biology. And along with evolutionary biology, there is a small area already attached to it and that is systematics. Basically, how do we carry out animal taxonomy, animal biodiversity assessment, what are the rules of animal nomenclature, what role does international code for zoological nomenclature play and one last topic is cladistics, what is the modern practice of establishing phylogenetics with help of cladograms, right. So, that is cladistics. So, and also one topic, I am sorry I forgot that, that is molecular taxonomy, okay. So, systematics is a very, very a small area. When we do it in the class, it is a matter of just two lectures and you are done with all the five topics of systematics. Section B has got, it starts with biochemistry, a very important part, but a small part. So, doing biochemistry is not going to take that much time. Next part is physiology and physiology with respect to human physiology. All the questions are human physiology based and third part is you can call it embryology or you can call it developmental biology. Embryology or developmental biology. All right. So, these are the topics which are there in paper 2. Now, let us look at these topics in some detail. But before I come to it, let me identify the big five of your geology syllabus. In other words, if you are doing these five topics really well, you are sorted for 70% of your examination headache. And these big fives are in paper 2, genetics is one area which is really a big area and second area is physiology and the third area is biochemistry. If you do these three areas very well, you can be pretty sure that in paper 2, approximately two-thirds of the questions, 66% of the questions to up to 70% of the question in a given good year, you are going to solve by the virtue of having done these three areas very well. And in paper 1, phyla of the invertebrates, the classes of chordata and comparative anatomy, although we will be doing comprehensively, but later on, if even if you do selective revision, 
ओके हम अपना काम करेंगे टू कवर इट कॉम्प्रीहेंसिवली बट लेटर ऑन इफ यू डू सेलेक्टिव रिविजन यू विल बी टोटली कंफर्टेबल इन द एग्जामिनेशन सो टू एरियाज इन वर्टिब्रेट्स एंड वर्टिब्रेट्स इंक्लूडिंग कंपेरेटिव एनाटमी एंड थ्री एरियाज हियर जेनेटिक्स बायो केमिस्ट्री एंड फिजियोलॉजी दीज फाइव एरियाज आर दी बिग फाइव ऑफ योर जियोलॉजी सिलेबस द रिमेनिंग एरियाज आर गोइंग टू टेक मच लेस टाइम cell biology even though there are several topics it actually does not take much time given the nature of questions which have been asked in the examination although i would like to tell you ki cell bio jaise area mein na everyone is very confident but most of the time your confidence is not fact based most of the students do not read do not like to read good books on cell biology therefore they end up writing very average answers and average answers in civil service main examination get you below average score because it is a process of elimination so until and unless you kind of lay claim over the compelling nature of your candidature ki mujhe to list mein hona hai tab tak to examiner will be disposing you off with average or below average marks therefore whatever you are doing try to do it so well because after all आपको तो शॉर्ट नोट ही लिखना है सो ट्राई टू डू इट सो वेल दैट नो एग्जामिनर कैन डिनाई यू लेस देन सिक्सटी परसेंट स्कोर एंड एट लीस्ट इन सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन योर गोल शुड बी टू फेच अप टू सेवेंटी परसेंट स्कोर फ्रॉम द हैंड्स ऑफ द एग्जामिनर दैट इज डू एबल बिकॉज एग्जामिनर ऑल्सो नोज दैट फॉर अ टेन मार्कर यू आर गोइंग टू राइट फिफ्टीन नॉट सेंटेंसेज मैक्सिमम फिफ्टीन सेंटेंसेज इन जुलॉजी इवन टेन सेंटेंसेज प्लस द राइट सेट ऑफ डायग्राम्स will be more than adequate so examiner knows that you are having constraint of time you are having constraint of space besides there is only limited amount of uh, information that you can fit within the space and within the scope of a short note therefore no matter how short you are writing if you are focusing on the key facts and if you are illustrating then examiner is going to reward you very handsomely now next thing is remember what i told you about illustration that when we use the word illustration we do not mean that all the time we have to draw diagram if you are dealing with the structure then yes diagram is your illustration but if you are dealing with a process then what is your illustration tell me your illustration is a flow chart and when you are dealing with a phenomenon so what is your illustration your illustration is an example so in your subject you have to illustrate wherever such an opportunity arises so a balanced simple a straight forward answer focusing on the key facts giving a little amount of value addition with the right type of illustration an examiner is not going to stop you at all in in actuality the examiner will actually be pushing your candidature examiner will be encouraging the case of you in the examination by rewarding you well okay so big 5 is something that ultimately in the later cycles of revision aapko prioritize karna hai because when you have done these big 5 the rest of them are going to take less than 30% of your preparation time cell biology if you have proper notes proper q and a which you will be developing along with me evolutionary biology same proper q and a proper notes embryology or developmental biology and then ecology economic zoology biostats and instrumentation and animal behavior all of these things together provided you have high quality notes and based on those high quality notes if you have prepared high quality answers you have got an r feedback and everything yakin karo that you can revise this area in exactly less than 30% time that you are ever going to devote to the coverage of geology or that you are ever going to devote to revision of geology so always play this mental game of big 5 and then rest of the topics and to be clear i do not advise anyone to leave any section of the syllabus gone are those days when you would prepare limited and you will expect that the questions will necessarily come 
that does not actually happen anymore and that does not happen anymore in any subject so it can be a very popular humanity subject or it can be any other science subject you are going to do nearly the entire syllabus when i say nearly the entire syllabus my meaning is you have done approximately 95 percent of the syllabus if you have done 95 percent of the syllabus hardly anything can be asked to you in geology optional that will be beyond your reach doing so with our assistance will be easy but of course you have to put in your side of the effort also let's take a detailed look on the syllabus okay so here we are with the syllabus so see paper 1 starts with non core data the very first topic agar kuch kat raha hoga to aap mujhe batana ki kuch kat raha hai uh, so that i can uh, just look into that let me just see if there is anything that is cutting out no uh, it's uh, clearly visible okay nice so <clears throat> so when we talk about uh, non core data so the very first topic of non core data is essentially a general topic here we are not talking about any particular phylum what we are going to first see classification and relationship of various phyla up to the subclasses and when the upsc says that up to the subclasses you have to do so in certain phyla you can go up to the level of order but leave that on your teacher because the teacher knows where up to order level if you write your answer will carry certain depth but other than that you can very well follow what the upsc is saying so every phylum that you are going to do every phylum you first have to do classification because with the individual phylum there is no mention of classification for example if you see cnidaria platyhelminthes nemathelminths annelida anywhere do you see the term classification written answer is no why because classification is already mentioned here so classification this is not a topic that will be done all the phyla classification in the beginning but what happens whenever your teacher picks up one phylum the teacher will first be doing the classification of this phylum and only then the teacher will be moving to a specific topic as mentioned in the syllabus like when protozoa starts first and foremost you do the modern classification of protozoa all right and after that you will be moving to locomotion in protozoa nutrition in protozoa reproduction in protozoa and sexual reproduction in protozoa and how sexual reproduction has evolved in protozoa then there are four life history questions paramecium monocystis plasmodium and leishmania that ways so it starts with classification then there are certain general topics locomotion nutrition reproduction and sexual reproduction means a special emphasis on sexual reproduction now but before that let us move to other topics after this the accounts of acylomate and silomate organisms and in this process you will also be touching pseudocylomates but difference between acylomate and silomate has to be very nicely done with a couple of necessary diagram and preferably in the tabular manner in your subject wherever possible try to answer the differentiation based question in a tabular manner but there will be certain cases and listen to this thing very carefully there will be certain cases when tabular comparison you will not be able to do because the two things which have been given to you for comparison they may not be having so many points of distinction that you will be able to create a table in that case it will be paragraph wise like one of these things will be explained before with in certain clear cut points and then you will be coming to the next set of things so that will be happening okay <clears throat> after that protostomes and deuterostomes and as you later move all these things will be further clearer as you move through the phyla then this is about symmetry so 
two types of symmetries bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry we know that radial symmetry in animal evolution has been primitive bilateral symmetry has been more advanced so how do you compare bilateria and radiata what are the points of comparison what are the examples etc then a status of protista do you remember that whitaker in his classification treated protista as a kingdom of life in five kingdom classification system whitaker created a kingdom called protista where he included all the unicellular and colonial eukaryotes and then he created a kingdom called animalia where he included all the heterotrophic eukaryotes which happened to be multicellular and which were not fungi right so here we are going to see do the protista really represent a kingdom or there is something else and you will be learning very nicely then how about parazoa what are parazoa what are their features so on where do they fit in the overall diversity then onychophora and hemichordata <clears throat> and finally symmetry of the animal body plan and when you are doing symmetry of the animal body plan so obviously along with symmetry of the body plan you will be touching bilateria and radiata so that is the general questions that is the general topics before you embark upon your journey of the phyla and then here you have the phyla right from protozoa up until echinodermata so all the major phyla are included here understood and take a look here so protozoa and in every phylum there is a trend the trend is that there will be a few general topics and there will be a few life history based topics and every single topic gives you one straight question so locomotion in protozoa one question nutrition another question reproduction yet another question sexual reproduction and its evolution is yet another question and then there are four life histories paramecium very interesting monocystis plasmodium and leishmania happen to be parasitic then you come to porifera here there is no type study means there is no genus whose life history you have to do here you are going to do first and foremost bina kahe classification to karni hi hai but apart from classification you are going to do the skeleton very primitive type of skeleton nonetheless important canal system and reproduction out of these i am straight away marking the canal system happens to be one of the most important questions to be asked on porifera then cnidaria in cnidaria polymorphism is a very important topic that keeps coming in the examination and then defensive structure is no less important and once in a while coral reefs what are they how they are formed what is their structure and all so these three happen to be most important questions to be asked on cnidaria besides you also have got metagenesis but i won't call metagenesis as frequently repeating topic as you have other three topics life history of obelia and aurelia are to be studied so now if you see you have life history of four protozoans that is plasmodium paramecium monocystis and leishmania and here you have got obelia and aurelia so i am just counting that up until now you have accumulated six life histories also there is a lot of peer psychosis in a number of students that life history itna karna padega my point is do it because nowadays what is happening i will totally agree that general topics are more important in the examination compared to the life history in a given year in section a of paper 1 maximum two life history related questions are asked one of the question will generally be on the life history itself 
and other question will be on a specific aspect of the life history. So both the questions are not going to be on the life history, one on entire life history, one on a specific aspect of life history. But when you do, what happens is that you do not fear missing any question because what happens that if there is a question which has got three subparts, let's say A, B and C, A is a general question, B is a general question, but C is a life history based question. These two questions you know very well, but suppose you have followed a strategy where you have decided to ignore the life history based question. What is now going to happen? You are unable to answer, let us say this is question number three. So now you are unable to handle question number three where two segments out of the three were well within your reach. But just because you decided to ignore the segment, uh, one segment, life history segment, now you are crippled for your choices. Don't let this situation come. Lot of candidates, they cut a lot of corners during preparation and they pay very dearly in the examination. What most people do not know, do not realize while ignoring such topics or while following such a strategic blunders. I'm I'm calling it blunders. And what happens? Whole lot of people they share later after their selection that we did not do this and still we scored better. This was not a strategy. This was luck. With due respect to everyone who cleared the examination by being very selective, I will still say it was luck. You will never come to know what number of attempt they took to clear the examination and in the earlier attempts, what were their scores. But when they say this, they actually put a lot of candidates on the wrong path of preparation. And when the candidate has ample time, for example, all of you are preparing for 2025, then when the candidate has ample time, the candidate is still misguided to ignore certain topics. No, if the UPSC has given, then just be like a good old fashioned student where you have to do each and every topic that has been given in the syllabus. Later cycles of revision can see certain amount of selectivity in your approach, but not while covering it. Coverage is one thing. First revision should also be applied to every single topic. From second revision onwards, you will be a little more selective. So crux of the story, do the life cycles as well. Moving next, now you come to plat worms, platy helminths. So now here you have got parasitic adaptations, important. All right. And same here, parasitic adaptations in nemat helminths. And both of these are pretty important. Parasitic adaptations in uh, platy helminths and nemat helminths happen to be important. And then you have got two type of studies, fasciola and tinea. And not only fasciola and tinea in general, but fasciola and tinea in the context of the infestation diseases that they cause in human beings. Okay, so they are pathogenic symptoms. But if you see, apart from parasitic adaptation, there is nothing else that has been given in flatworms. Now we come to nemat helminths. General features, as such, you are going to do this. So, along with classification only, of general features to karhi loge. Right? And I hope little bit of Hindi is okay. But if there is anyone who has difficulty understanding Hindi, I can completely keep myself in English. I need to know your feedback uh, in the Q&A box. If uh, there is any discomfort uh, with some use of Hindi here and there. So that comes from uh, me being in North India almost for my entire life so far. So that sprinkles some amount of Hindi. And uh, I happen to be a good bilingual. I can speak very fluent Hindi and very fluent English. But because it is an English medium batch, so I'm keeping myself 95% English. But if there is any discomfort with the Hindi expressions here and there, and if you feel that you are missing out something, do let me know and I will not sprinkle Hindi here and there. And if you are okay, then it is okay. It will only add uh, a natural flow to what we are talking. Okay. And if there is a question, uh, don't forget to raise hands. That is the easiest way to ask the question in this live class. Simply raise hand and I will be switching on 
your microphone and if i'm in the middle of something then uh, you just wait raise hand and wait and i'll be taking your question and last but not the least if there is no question in the session even then before ending the session i will be taking your questions for sure okay so if you think it is a minor question it can wait until the end of the session no no worries we will uh, take the questions later now in nemat helminths so you have got general features of nemat helminths which i do not count as a separate topic but here parasitic adaptation is not a general question on parasitic adaptation here parasitic adaptations on in ascaris and in butcher area so in these two cases only parasitic adaptation and also don't forget that it has already mentioned life history so now how many life cycles we are looking at we are looking at 10 life cycles four in protozoa two in cnidaria two in flatworms two in nemat helminths correct now we come to annelida in annelida you are going to do metamerism and coelom that's important and then modes of life in polychaetes that is another and then life history of nereids earthworm and leech so these are the three life histories you are going to uh, study so on the surface of it it will look like ki kitne life histories karne hain but the good news is ki jo agla hai hamara arthropoda there is no life history in arthropoda in arthropoda you have only the general topics if you see but there are lot of general topics and if you ask me among all the phyla arthropoda happen to happens to be one of the most important phyla in the examination the most agar aap examination ke question utha ke dekh lo larval forms in crustacea one question important parasitism and parasitic adaptations another question vision in arthropods another important question respiration is also asked but not so common okay and when you are talking about vision and respiration so focus on prawns cockroach and scorpion then modifications of mouth parts in insects important with reference to cockroach mosquito house fly honey bee and butterfly so these many uh, insects you have to focus to study the modification of mouth parts then metamorphosis means conversion of the larval form into adult form in insects and it's controlled by a hormone the hormone happens to be a steroidal substance ecdysone and ecdysone has a connection in genetics also with respect to the discovery of discovery of the behavior of polyteen chromosomes how they are connected we will study later okay and then social behavior in apis and termites they happen to be two most social kind of insects so we are going to see apis and termite social behavior then we come to mollusks in mollusks we have to see three life history so 13 life history is there and then lamellidans phyla and sepia 13 plus 3 16 but interestingly most important questions among the most important question is torsion and detorsion in gastropods lot of people who do it from the textbook they will find it a hard to understand concept you do it in class it will always be within your grip acha iske baad feeding in mollusca respiration locomotion these topics happen to be okay kind of important but torsion and detorsion are most important in echinodermata the larval forms happen to be very very important 
and the seventeenth and last life history is asterias. So seventeen life histories you have to do, and seventeen life histories basically mean that seventeen multiplied by two, thirty four max fifty one. A uh, sides of A four sheet you will be creating a synopsis in. So when you have created a synopsis in three sides of an A four sheet, this is a certain way to remember all the essentials and when the question is asked you will be ready to take the challenge of that question that brings invertebrate zoology to an end it's the largest area i am not denying that but it is also one of the most scoring areas if you give it some love some attention you 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 will then realize even with a simple but well illustrated answer you will be scoring very well in paper 1 now moving to second part that is chordata in chordata first and foremost you study the groups of chordata so you will start with and in chordata obviously there is no life history to be studied at all no life history to be studied now here if you see protochordata where you study the origin of the chordates and then general features of branchiostoma and herdmania right but this is protochordata not chordata proper okay so the earliest members of the protochordata so protochordata me branchiostoma and herdmania life history you do and there is focus on certain specific topics not on the entire life history now here in fishes respiration in fishes locomotion in fishes migration in fishes and in some of the years they will combine a question on locomotion as well as migration and such a question will be framed for 20 marks then there is amphibia only three questions origin of tetrapods parental care and pedomorphosis only three and here parental care is quite important and pedomorphosis is also asked pretty often reptiles origin of reptiles skull types happens to be important and status of sphenodon and crocodile also happens to be important then if you see birds origin of birds then flight adaptation and then migration migration of birds frequently asked flight adaptation also frequently asked and do you notice one thing very nicely here that origin of chordates origin of tetrapods origin of reptiles origin of birds and origin of the mammals in 5 out of 6 groups you have to do their origin and every year you may find one short note on origin almost every year i'm not saying specifically strictly every year but origin happens to be pretty important and then in mammals dentition very easy topic then general features of egg laying mammals one pouched mammals another aquatic mammals another and primates another okay so general features of these four special classes of mammals special groups of mammals class not in taxonomic sense but special groups of mammal that is egg laying mammal pouched mammal aquatic mammal and primate just two sides of an a4 sheet and you are done for these topics and then each endocrine gland pituitary how its structure is there how does it work what are the controls over the pituitary function and what is the physiological response of pituitary hormones similarly a structure of the thyroid functional parts of the thyroid secretion of the thyroid and then what is the physiological effect of thyroid hormones how the thyroid gland is controlled then parathyroid same thing then adrenal 
same thing pancreas and then both male and female gonads in everyone the format is going to be the same a structural the functional parts the secretions the physiological effect and control over its function right and also what is the interrelationship of different endocrine glands because the endocrine glands they work in more or less as a very very nice finely tuned coordinated system that is how your body works as a perfectly designed machine therefore a little bit of their interrelationship also then this segment caudata will be ending with comparative anatomy like i said we will be covering entire comparative anatomy but you can be a little selective your teacher will be telling you where you can be selective but not right now okay coverage ke liye be totally open minded that all of it we are knowing because what happens that when we go with the entire syllabus coverage even if there are two three unexpected questions they are well within our range and those in the last three years i have been interacting with whole lot of students who go with selective uh, coverage they find more than seven eight short notes out of their range and that messes up their mains performance and the final chances of selection so don't let it happen and once you have basically done a thorough survey of the chordates and understanding of their general features you are anyway not going to find at all difficult how you are going to uh, compare their anatomical features let me just see if there is any question waiting for my attention no i don't think there is any question fine so <clears throat> now if you see so you have got the comparative anatomy of integument and its derivatives important endoskeleton not so important locomotory organs average importance digestive system and respiratory system happen to be important and then a structure of aortic arches is quite important urinogenital system is okay and then you have to compare brain and sense organs to be specific eye and ear that completes section a of paper 1 it will take a good amount of effort i am not denying this fact it will take approximately one third of your total preparation time but this one third time spending is going to be very much worth it because it is going to give you 60% of your paper 1 question in paper 1 you are at a liberty to take three questions either from section a or three question from section b but in my experience i have seen mostly students are scoring well if they took their first three questions from section a although you are at total liberty to take your three questions from section b also but somehow the nature of section a is such that it is very traditional you just have to give a clear and crisp account you have to draw the figure you have to give the examples and marks will be coming to you so long as you are drawing clean diagrams and your writing is simple but covering all the important facets now we come to section b section b entirely happens to be very very easy topic very easy topic one or two topics may be slightly dry i am not saying boring slightly dry nonetheless they are also easy to understand so ecology syllabus needs a whole lot of reorganization and uh, now in the next week your ecology classes are going to start so we will first reorganize the syllabus before we cover this with you so in ecology you have got concept of biosphere then biomes and if you notice biome is again repeated here but ignore that so then biomes biogeochemical cycles 
UPSC does not specify what all biogeochemical cycles you have to do, but you have to do four biogeochemical cycles: carbon, liquid, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. These are the four biogeochemical cycles that we are expected to do in our preparation. Then this is a very broad topic: human-induced changes in the atmosphere means up in the air. including greenhouse effect but then it mentions nothing else but what you have to do is greenhouse effect then air pollution what else we have to do we have to do acid rain because acid rain is the effect of air pollution only and ozone layer depletion keep writing ozone layer depletion all right then you will be doing ecological succession and obviously before you do ecological succession you have to do community ecology so first you do community ecology <laughs> then you do ecological succession not the other way around so that is why the syllabus needs to be reorganized tabhi concept banega else you will not be getting the right concept biome is something which is already mentioned ecotone is the transitional areas is the transitional area between ecosystems so ecotone is something that you are going to do either under community because pretty often we can also call ecotone as the transitional area between two biotic communities and if you are including the abiotic factors you can very well define an ecotone as the transitional area between two ecosystems so wherever you want to do after that you come to the concept of ecosystem where you do the structure of ecosystem then the functions of the ecosystem then when you come to the types of ecosystem there are three ecosystems that we will be taking as illustration one is pond ecosystem other is grassland ecosystem last one is forest ecosystem these are the three types of ecosystem we shall be taking and we are going to understand what are the principal abiotic factors which play a role here what are the principal biotic dynamics happening in this ecosystem who are the principal producers who are the principal primary consumers who are the first level predators so on okay and then ab dekho fir se ecological succession aa gaya something that is mentioned here so you cancel it out and ecological adaptation like plants and animals they happen to adapt to the habitat where they are growing or animals where they are uh, located so what are some of the general patterns here you do not have to do a particular species as a case study but what are the general patterns of the desert adapted animals desert adapted plants what are certain features of water adapted animals and water adapted plants what are some of the adaptations of the animals which live on the trees and what are some of the adaptations of the plants growing in the for so on so that is a survey of ecological adaptation then we come to population ecology where what is an ecological population so ecological population is nothing but members of the same species which occupy the same community at the same point of time that is what population is then we come to what are the characteristics of a population how do we describe of population what are the characteristic features then how does the population increase or decrease in size what are the dynamics of it so obviously birth of new organisms will increase the population death of new organism will decrease the population plus emigration that is going out of the organisms will decrease the population immigration that is coming into the population some new organisms will increase the population how this dynamics operate and finally how the population stabilizes itself over a long horizon of time 
what are the factors which are inside of the population and what are the factors which act upon the population from the outside. All of this we need to understand. Then biodiversity. In general, what is biodiversity? What is the importance of biodiversity? What are the threats to biodiversity? How do we conserve biodiversity? And what are the conservation measures taken for biodiversity in our country? Plus, natural resources ki diversity ko, how do we preserve? This is a very vaguely defined topic and therefore on this questions do not come. But we are going to do the natural resource its biodiversity, its diversity, not biodiversity, and how do we preserve them? Then wildlife in India, what do we understand by wildlife? A snapshot picture of the wildlife in India, these many species, these many birds, these many mammals, according to the geological survey, these many reptiles, these many amphibians, so on, plus some flagship species, which we are very proud of as being India's wealth of wildlife. Like we have tiger, our national animal, lions, elephants, Asiatic elephants, and also Asiatic lions. Then all across the country, we have got a very good population of leopards. Then in the Himalayan ranges, we have got snow leopard. Then we have got uh, uh, rhinoceros, gangetic dolphins, gangetic gharial, in Rajasthan, we have got great Indian bustards. So these are flagship species. About most of them, we are running one or the other conservation program. A short account of all of this will be enough, plus a very crisp, brief account of Project Tiger. That is all. Then, environmental biodegradation. So because we have already done the atmospheric degradation, so here we are mainly going to see water pollution. And we are also going to see a little bit of soil pollution. Then impact of bio, biodegradation and pollution on the biosphere and how do we prevent and control. There is a general geography based question here, remote sensing for sustainable development. Here you have to study less about remote sensing and more about how do we apply remote sensing to secure sustainable development, like in resource mapping, land use pattern analysis, wildlife monitoring, so on. Okay, And then it is the same topic, environmental biodegradation, so this gets cancelled out. Now, if you see, there are certain extra topics in the forest service examination. Uh, first one is, in conservation of natural resources, they have made it very clear that we want you to study mineral mining, fisheries, aquaculture, forestry and grassland. So we will be touching each one but strictly within 10 to 15 points because these are classic 10 markers. And in the examination, when we are preparing for it, if we are unnecessarily doing a topic that is significant, just for a short note, we are wasting our time. Project Tiger, we are anyway going to include. And then sustainable production in agriculture and integrated pest management. So these are the topics of ecology which we have to do. Then comes animal behavior, ethology. So four segments, but in each segment there are more than one topics. So, in behavior, we have got sensory filtering, responsiveness, sinus stimuli, learning and memory, instinct, habituation, conditioning and imprinting. Everything in concise 15 to 20 points. But what you are learning in these 15 to 20 points is more important than collecting any 15 to 20 points. Then how do hormones control drive? How do pheromones play their role in alarm spreading? What is Crips's behavior? How do certain prey species detect their predator? What are the tactics of the predator to capture their prey? And then what is the prey-predator interaction? In primates, what are the social hierarchies? 
and what are the social organizations in insect a little bit of social organization in insect you have already seen in the arthropoda and we are going to give it a theoretical framework in here then certain special type of animal behavior dimension orientation how do the animals navigate how do the animals perform homing what are the biological rhythms is there any internal biological clock within the animals then what are the rhythms tidal rhythm seasonal rhythm circadian rhythm circadian rhythm is rhythm over a scale of 24 hours and then methods of studying animal behavior especially when you study a sexual conflict selfishness kinship and altruism but even outside of the context of methods of studying animal behavior question on altruism question on kinship question on uh, sexual conflict has been asked so methods of studying animal behavior should be treated as a separate topic now then we come to ecological economic geology the last segment of the conventional geology iske baad aayega biostats and instrumentation short uh, topics now these are the cultures that you have to do apiculture that is honeybee silk culture then lac culture carp culture pearl culture prawn culture and vermiculture vermiculture was added to the syllabus when the syllabus was last revised then we have to do major infectious and communicable diseases malaria pyleria tuberculosis cholera and aids and what you have to do is there any vector for all the diseases there is not necessarily a vector for example for tuberculosis you don't have a vector but for malaria and filaria you have vector similarly for cholera it is a waterborne disease so there is no vector for aids there is no vector but if there is a vector involved vector in all the cases pathogens are there then prevention and not only prevention but if india is running any program for their control and all we have to talk about them also then these are the extra topics for forest services smallpox and plague plague is a disease which is largely in control a smallpox is the only viral disease which has been totally eradicated we used to say the same about polio but polio yes certain countries have eradicated including india but polio cases are still there in some countries of the world after that you have got cattle and livestock diseases their pathogen and their vectors then pests of sugarcane that is specifically pyrilla perpetuella then oil seed that is achaea janata and rice that is cetophilus oryzae these three insect pests we have to do and then take a look on modern topics transgenic animals so what are transgenic animals how are the transgenic animals produced and what are the applications of transgenic animals then medical biotechnology what are the applications of biotechnology in the field of treating human beings and there are a lot of applications with use of biotechnology we detect diseases because there are a lot of detection tools which are based on certain proteins certain uh, antigens so on uh, that is the first part uh, second part certain antibodies not antigens second part is there are whole lot of diseases that we prevent using biotechnology by building vaccines and all and then there are lot of treatment approaches that we have gotten from biotechnology most prominently gene therapy and also stem cell based therapy we have to do human genetic diseases a topic that is also there in genetics so we will do it in genetics then genetic counseling especially when a child is likely to have a genetic condition and if the child is screened positively for that genetic condition or child or fetus so how does the counseling go through from the genetic counselor to the parents what is the process etc that and then 
जीन थेरेपी तो जीन थेरेपी शुड हैव बीन इन जेनेटिक्स बट इट इज गिवेन इन हियर एंड देन फॉरेंसिक बायोटेक्नोलॉजी देन दीज आर टू टॉपिक्स विच अ लॉट ऑफ बायो स्टूडेंट्स ट्राई टू रन अवे फ्रॉम बट द फैक्ट इज दैट rather than running away from there you should be preparing these topics because these topics give you a score like mathematics first and foremost is designing of experiments how do we design uh, an experiment in general so that we exactly know what kind of data will be generated during the experiment what are the chances of errors in the data and how do we neutralize the stati statistical errors statistical deviations in the data how do we design the experiment then null hypothesis correlation and regression and then distribution and measure of central tendencies then you have to do chi square test then a student's t test and then one way and two way f test only these many topics numericals are normally not asked in instrumentation methods a spectrophotometer phase contrast and fluorescence microscopy radioactive tracer ultra centrifugation gel electrophoresis pcr elisa fluorescence in situ hybridization and chromosome painting these many topics and here we have to do electron microscopy transmission and a scanning electron microscopy and finally we have to do for ifs some extra topics flame photometry gm counter giger muller counter and scintillation counting but this one is definitely going to give one short note in some of the year two short note and this gives you one short note so small but pretty much worth doing it then you come to paper 2 in paper 2 there is hardly any ifs specific topic all the topics are usually present in both of the examination if there is something there are certain newly added topics which are not there in the ifs for example nucleic acid topology is not there in ifs dna motif is not there in ifs so on so now coming to the second paper cell bio so cell bio has got two clear cut parts cell bio has got a structure a structure of various cellular components that means organelles nucleus because technically speaking nucleus is not an organelle and chromosomes that is the first part the second part is definitely the processes of the cell in processes we will include transport processes and in transport processes what you include is membrane transport and vesicular transport where macromolecules move from one location to another sometimes from outside of the cell to inside of the cell or sometimes from inside of the cell to outside or sometimes within the cell so all of this happens when macromolecules get surrounded into vesicles so we are going to do transport apart from transport very important process will be cell division that is mitosis and meiosis plus cell cycle regulation and processes happen to be more important processes happen to be more important in the examination now if we look at the syllabus so take a look nucleus a structure plasma membrane a structure mitochondria golgi body endoplasmic reticulum lyso ribosomes lysosomes plus here chromosome types general account of chromosome then lambros chromosome and polytin chromosome organization of chromatin heterochromatin all of these are a structure based question but when it comes to organelles when it comes to organelles then with the organelles they are also going to ask you 
the structure and function in many of the questions. So, for every organelle, we need to know very clearly what are their functions and not just a uh, surface level knowledge of the function, but proper knowledge of the functions you need to have. Besides, what you have got are processes. Cell division, very important, mitosis and meiosis, and in this, meiosis is more important than mitosis. Mitotic spindle and mitotic apparatus and chromosome movement are part of the same larger topic. So, because they all refer to the metaphase, anaphase processes, it was not meant, needed to be mentioned separately. Anyone who does metaphase, anaphase nicely within the general context of mitosis will anyway be doing these topics. Then we have got cell cycle regulation. How does the cell cycle get regulated? Plus some of the newly added topics. Ideally, this should have found a place in genetics, but chalo, theek hai, jo hai. Nucleic acid topology means surface properties of nucleic acids. Then certain conserved sequence patterns in DNA that we know as DNA motif. Then DNA replication, how does DNA copy itself? This is a topic that we have to do for prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Okay. Transcription we have to do for prokaryotes and we have to do eukaryotes. They look like big topics. We will try to manage it as simple and as small as possible, but without, of course, compromising on your competitive standing. Then RNA processing primarily in the eukaryotes. Translation, we have to do prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Protein folding is well studied in eukaryotes that is where we will do and transport of the protein fo proteins folded proteins is also something that is well understood in eukaryotes that is all cell bio syllabus okay yes. genetics looks like a lot of topics but actually not if you see genetics has got a very well defined syllabus and they generally do not go beyond the syllabus so, modern concept of the gene. How do we understand the gene in modern context, especially when the scientists are knowing about the entire genome and everything? So, what is the modern concept of genes? Then, how eukaryotic genes are structured into split genes? We will do that. And then, how genetic regulation of phenotype takes place? It is not regulation of gene expression. Regulation of gene expression is here gene expression and its regulation. But we are going to do genetic regulation of organism's phenotype and then genetic code. The fact is that genetic code we have to do along with translation. Here translation is there in the cell bio. So along with this only we will be doing genetic code. Then sex determination in Drosophila and man. In IFS, they have also mentioned nematodes. Sex chromosomes, what are they? What is their structure? And how have they evolved? Then Mendel's laws of inheritance. Then recombination, linkage, deviations from Mendelian uh, laws, that is multiple alleles. Genetics of blood groups, especially ABO blood group and RH blood groups. Pedigree analysis, how do we do that? And hereditary diseases in man, something that is mentioned in economic geology also. In hereditary diseases, they also ask a couple of questions, especially associated with a disease. So, we will have to do those diseases as well. So, hereditary diseases and pedigree analysis of certain hereditary diseases. Then we have to study genetic mutations and how do the mutations happen. The science of how does the mutation happens is known as mutagenesis. This part is biotechnology, recombinant DNA technology, then certain vectors, plasmid and cosmids and artificial chromosomes, transgenic technology, but incidentally transgenic animal is already mentioned in economic geology. How do we create DNA? clones 
So there are two ways to clone DNA. One inside of a cell and second is outside of a cell. Inside of a cell, when you are cloning, that is by sending a copy of the gene. And then as the cell divides, the gene will be copied. Outside of a cell, PCR is the best method to copy a gene. Then whole animal cloning, especially by nuclear transfer method. So what are the principles and what are the methods here? Then regulation of gene expression. Now if you see, gene expression, transcription and translation is mentioned in cell bio and their regulation is mentioned here. But what we are going to do, transcription and translation, we are going to bring inside genetics and once we have done that, we will also do their regulation. Then cell signaling, signaling molecules, cell death and defects in signaling pathway is mentioned in genetics. Ideally speaking, it should be done with cell biology. And then this is again biotech 2. That is RFLP, RAPD, AFLP and application of RFLP in DNA fingerprinting. All right. RFLP, RAPD, AFLP and application of RFLP in DNA fingerprinting. That is the most common way of carrying out DNA fingerprinting. Then ribozyme technology, ribozymes kya hote hain, kya se develop hote hain, kya kya type hote hain, when were they discovered, what was the significance of their discovery and why do we make ribozymes, what are the ways in which we use ribozymes in the context of humans. Human Genome Project, a project that got concluded way back in 2003, but a lot of follow-up projects are still running and they are giving us a significant amount of data. And then genomics and proteomics. So this should be proteomics, but UPSC ke syllabus mein ye mistake tha, so yahan bhi gaya. And that pretty much ends genetics. Evolution is an easy topic, but at the same time, very, very important. Theories on origin of life. So theories on origin of life will basically survey some of the historic legacy theories which are no longer correct and then the theory that is correct. The correct theory will be expanded and all that. Then theories of evolution. So Darwinian theory, Lamarckian theory, Neo-Darwinism, Neo-Lamarckism, nothing else. And then natural selection, that is the Darwinian theory, is already mentioned. Then what is the role of mutations in evolution? And there is something called mutation theory of evolution. So we will get an opportunity to study that. What are the evolutionary patterns? How do the species evolve? What are the patterns that we see in the world of evolutionary biology? There are mega evolutions, there are micro evolutions, they, they, they will be, there will be convergent evolution and so on and so forth. So there are so many patterns that emerge. We have to see each one and we have to learn their examples also. Then there is a new force of evolutionary changes that has been discovered by Dr. Gabriel Dover, not uh, too far back in history, within the last 20 years a new evolutionary force that is called molecular drive that has also been discovered. We, we are going to study that. And then mimicry as an evolutionary uh, phenomenon, variation, isolation of a species and how, what are the consequences of isolation and how do new species arise. After this general topic, you are going to study evolution of horse, elephant and man keeps coming in the examination. If there is one set of topics most important, this is what it is. Then Hardy-Weinberg law is equally important. And how does the animal world distribute itself upon the land? And to what extent continental drift theory can explain the same? That is the uh, thing and then systematics like I said small area geological nomenclature international code for geological nomenclature cladistics molecular taxonomy 
and basically cataloging of biodiversity. Here we are not going to study biodiversity from the angle of uh, ecology. Basically here we are going to do is cataloging of biodiversity. In biochemistry, a straight uh, and general uh, topics which are taught everywhere are given. Like the structure of carbohydrates, role of carbohydrates, fats and fatty acid including cholesterol, proteins and amino acids, then nucleic acids. Ideally, bioenergetics should come here. Then glycolysis and Krebs cycle, oxidation and reduction, oxidative phosphorylation and then energy conservation and release, uh, release ATP cycle cyclic AMP and its structure and role. And mind it, cyclic AMP comes in mechanism of enzyme action. Hum log isko karenge cell signaling mein. Mechanism of hormone action, not enzyme action, hormone action. So, our syllabus needs a good amount of reorganization, real good amount of reorganization. Then hormone classification, steroid hormones, peptide hormones, what are they, what are their examples, how they are synthesized, what are their respective functions. And then enzymes, their types and mechanism of action. And also, although it is not mentioned, but inhibition of enzymes and regulation of enzyme. That also we have to do. Vitamins and coenzymes and then immunoglobulin and a general account of human immunity. It is not a total uh, immunology that you have to study, just a general account of human immunity and what are the classes of immunoglobulins, how they are structured and how do they function. Now we come to physiology. Here you have got blood and just after blood hemoglobin digestion and absorption, excretion, muscles, neuron, then uh, sensory physiology and physiology of reproduction. So, in bloods, you have to do first the composition and constituents of blood, then blood group and Rh factor in man, something that we will be doing in genetics, then factors and mechanism of coagulation, <coughs> iron metabolism, acid-base balance, Thermoregulation and anticoagulants. As a blood may chote chote topics, hai, but we have to do each one of them and very, very uh, crisply we have to do. <coughs> hemoglobin, what is the composition? What are the types of hemoglobin? And what role do hemoglobin play in transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide? Digestion, what is the role of salivary gland? What is the role of liver? What is the role of pancreas and intestinal glands? Excretion, nephron, regulation of urine formation, osmoregulation and excretory products. And this is the most question that comes from this. Nephron and regulation of urine formation. Pe. Muscles, types of muscles, mechanism of skeletal muscle contraction and effect of exercise on muscles. Neuron may nerve impulse, how it is conducted how it is transmitted across the synaptic junctions, what is the role that neurotransmitters play? What is the structure of eye and what is the physiology of vision? What is the structure of ears? What is the physiology of hearing? And then what is the physiology of olfaction, the smell? In physiology of reproduction, male reproductive physiology, female reproductive physiology, then puberty, that is onset of the reproductive uh, competence, and menopause, that is uh, end of reproductive phase in human beings. Well-defined syllabus. They never exceed the mandate of the syllabus. This is the last part of our syllabus. Developmental biology. Gametogenesis, that is spermatogenesis, composition of semen, capacitation, uh, then oogenesis. After this totipotency, especially with respect to uh, ovum and then fertilization. After fertilization, we study uh, some of the early uh, processes 
लाइक एस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ बॉडी एक्सेस फेट मैप गैस्ट्रोलेशन इन फ्रॉग एंड चिक एंड देन वी डू मॉर्फोजेनेसिस एंड मॉर्फोजेंस देन वी डू द रोल ऑफ जीन्स इन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ चिक देन वी डू होमियोटिक जीन्स डेवलपमेंट ऑफ आई एंड हार्ट एंड देन प्लेसेंट ऑफ मैमल सो बेसिक अकाउंट ऑफ गैस्ट्रोलेशन बेसिक अकाउंट ऑफ हार्ट एंड आई ऑर्गेनोजेनेसिस देन वी सी सेल लीनियज हाउ सेल्स अराइज फ्रॉम ईच अदर एंड हाउ कैन वी स्टडी देम देन सेल टू सेल इंटरक्शन स्पेशली द इंडक्शन काइंड ऑफ इंटरक्शन एंड अटैचमेंट टाइप ऑफ इंटरक्शन जेनेटिक एंड इंड्यूस टेराटोजेनेसिस वॉट इज टेराटोजेनेसिस वॉट इज अ टेराटा वॉट इज अ टेराटोजेन एंड कैन सर्टिन जेनेटिक एब्रेशन बी टेराटोजेनिक एंड वॉट आर द सब्सटेंसेज वॉट आर द रेडिएशन विच कॉज इंड्यूस टेराटोजेनेसिस वॉट इज द रोल दैट थाइरॉयड हॉर्मोन प्लेज इन एम्फीबियन मेटामोरफोसिस देन पीडोजेनेसिस एंड नियोटेनी बिट ऑफ इट इज देयर इन एम्फीबिया ऑल्सो and then cell death and aging then you have to do developmental genes in man in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer and cloning cloning is also there so we don't have to do cloning all over again stem cells what are the stem cells what are the characteristic features what are their sources what are their types how do we use them for human welfare and biogenetic law certain topics are extra in ifs role of cytoplasm in in and genetic control of development then second is metamorphosis in insects then pedogenesis and neoteny it is already here so then growth and degrowth regeneration neoplasia that is formation of tumors invasiveness of placenta we anyway cover with placenta and bears law and evo devo concept so it is along with biogenetic law we are anyway going to do bears law and evo devo concept topics are many in developmental biology but in effect developmental biology is going to take less time than physiology physiology is highly uh, time consuming i can say that so well that is all about the syllabus with which we have to be familiar and in the beginning it looks like whole lot of topics fact is that these topics are for 90% of the part they happen to be the list of questions what are the areas from where inside of the topic questions are asked genetics bit of physiology and that's it biochemistry all straight question evolutionary biology all straight questions cell bio all straight questions ecology couple of applied questions from here and there and then you will be finding a couple of topics in dev bio everything else is going to be a direct question so that is all about the syllabus i hope you get some clarity out of it now there is time for asking questions